We expect police officers to be our guardians. Everything suddenly feels safe when the police are around. After all, they would protect us, right? Welcome back to SS Unknown, and today I am back with another spine chilling true crime video. As you know, this your boy Glover, first name Glover, not the last name Glover, so don't get it twisted. And before we proceed, I must warn you that this video contains sensitive information. So if you cannot tolerate sensitive scenes, leave the room. Also, do not forget to like, share, and subscribe to this channel, because I have more in store for everyone. It was the year 1986 when the whole of Florida was ter terrorized by a murder spree. A former police officer who was supposed to protect the people went on to murder them instead. There was one killer and his partner in crime and nine victims. Now, all nine victims were dead within a span of 92 days. Was it a game of shooting for the killer or was it a war? So let us unravel the mystery of these gruesome crimes. Manuel Pardo, aka Manny, was found guilty of, the, of all of the murders before he was executed. There were six men and three women who lost their lives at the hands of Manuel Pardo. Most serial killings have patterns or connections and in this case, they were all drug dealers or they were unfortunate enough to get entangled in this chaos. The state of Florida believes that Manuel Pardo and his partner Garcia was eliminating competition. Nine shootings just to get ahead in the drug dealing league is a cold-blooded act. According to Pardo, he was serving the country by killing these drug dealers. He also proclaimed that they had no right to live. However, this does raise some questions. Who was he to decide who deserved to die? Who was he to take the law and justice into his hands? In January 1986, the first two victims lost their lives to Manuel's cruelty. Mario Amador, age 33, and Robert Alonzo, age 28, were the first victims shot with a 22 caliber Ruger pistol. On January 22nd, Pardo and Garcia went to Amador's residence to purchase two kilograms of cocaine. However, they decided to kill him and his partner rather than paying for it. The police reported that Pardo ordered these two victims to the ground before ruthlessly pumping bullets into their heads. He later shot bullets into their torsos as well. After these horrifying murders, this duo fled the scene with the stolen goods. The exact same pattern of double murder was repeated on February 27, 1986. The same acts were staged to utmost precision. Are you thinking the same as me? Yes, the same gun was used to shoot these two victims as well. However, this time Pardo and Garcia, along with their boss, Ramon Avaro, grew more greedy. This time Pardo went to the bathroom and retrieved his .22 caliber and shot Luis Robledo, age 37, and his partner, Yupiano Leto, age 39. They too were shot in their heads and torso. You know, to be honest, it, it, it makes me wonder if this was some sort of sick game to Pardo. However, they did not sit silently between January and February of the double mur murders. Later in January, Manuel Pardo found his third victim in the form of a federal government informant. After the drug ripoff murders, Pardo and Garcia met Michael Millett. See, Michael Miller was a gunsmith who supplied Pardo and Garcia with silencers. However, one day, Manny found out that Miller was also an informant. Out of fear that Miller was set, setting up Pardo and Garcia for a federal bus, this duo decided to silence Michael Miller forever. You can believe that. On January 28, 1986, <laughs> Miller was lured to his death. Pardo and Garcia took Millet into Pardo's vehicle where Millet's brains were blown out with a 9mm Smith & Wesson. 
they did not flinch while committing this gruesome murder and then dumped his body in a rural area. Later, his vehicle was driven off into a canal. Covering tracks is the easiest way to avoid being caught, right? <laughs> Unfortunately, no amount of eliminating trails worked in the end for them. That means by the end of February, Pardo had managed to kill five victims. The month of March was quiet and mellow. It is easy for you and me to think that these murders ended. However, little did people know that this was the calm before the storm. Pardo killed another four victims in April. Everything was eerily quiet between the 28th of February and the 21st of April. On April 22nd, Pardo killed women for the first time. As was their custom, Pardo and Garcia swung by Faro Quintero and Sarah Musa's residence. Apparently, Farah and Sarah had deeply disappointed Pardo and Garcia. However, did they deserve this untimely death? Let us check out how they met their fate. The girls had failed to purchase VCRs with Luis Robledo's visa card. Does that mean they knew about the murders? Nah. Both Farah and Sarah were unaware of these murders. I am sure if they knew, they would have either fled the country or they would have at least avoided being on Pardo's wrong side. So one failure was all it took for their death or was there something more sinister than this? Besides failing this mission, they also kept annoying Pardo about the $50 that Garcia owed Farrah. In addition, they also badmouthed and blemished Garcia's integrity in front of third parties. Can't do that, huh? Pardo and Garcia took partners in crime to a whole new level. Again, Pardo visited the bathroom where he took out his gun and first shot, first shot Sarah Musa's multiple times. Unfortunately for him, his gun decided to get jammed. Does that mean poor Farrah Cotero escaped this death? Mm -mm. Mayweather Pardo took it to a new level by unjamming his gun on top of her head. She met the same fate as her companion Sarah. So the answer is no. Farrah died too. Sarah and Farrah lost their lives at 30 and 28 years respectively. Well, it seems like Pardo and Garcia were daredevils because they never feared getting caught. This time, they wasted no time in getting on with the second double murder of April. You can easily guess their seventh victim. You have heard that name during this video. And if you thought the seventh victim was Ray Ramon Alvaro, also known as El Negro, you are absolutely right. Who was the eighth victim then? Daisy Richard is the perfect example of the wrong place at the wrong time. She was Avaro's girlfriend and ultimately that cost her her life. She got caught up in this whirlwind and suffered a gruesome death at the age of 38. Pardo and Garcia wasted no time in catching up with their boss. Evero was trying to avoid this dangerous duo and the two cocaine deals they were expecting never came through. Naturally, they were outraged. Evero had been successful in avoiding them, but unfortunately, his luck ran out. On April 23, 1986, both Evero, age 40, and his girlfriend were driven to an isolated spot. Pardo took out his loyal .22 Ruger and shot Evero continuously until the gun once again got jammed. You can imagine what Daisy suffered through this abrasive death. Yes, Pardo smashed Daisy's skull with his gun to get it unjammed. However, it looks like Pardo, Pardo too ran out of luck because he managed to get himself shot in the foot. Anyway, Manny then shot Daisy and dumped her body in a secluded spot. Everwell's body was left to rot in his own vehicle's trunk. This was when everything changed. They then fled to New York City where Pardo received medical treatment for his foot. This was the last murder he could commit. He was detained in New York where the police matched the bullet wound with those of Daisy's and Everwell. The police managed to get a search warrant and they raided Pardo's apartment. Here, they discovered a calendar book that outlined all the seven homicides, along with the newspaper clippings about his victim. This was how the police linked Pardo to all the nine homicides that took place in Florida. Early life, 
It goes without saying that your past and present go a long way in influencing and shaping you. However, there seemed to be nothing unusual with Manny. Pardo was born in New York City on September 24, 1956, and ironically, he was caught in the same place as his birth. Manuel was also a Boy Scout with, and a veteran of the Navy. It is quite astonishing when you realize that a criminal had such a bright life before he went on a serial killing spree. Like, how could a person dedicated to his nation commit such atrocious crimes? Manuel began his law enforcement career in the 1970s. He started with the Highway Patrol of Florida, and you know the most shocking part about that? He graduated at the top of his class during his academy. However, he was dismissed from the institution on the grounds of falsifying fines in 1979. The police department of Sweetwater then hired him. If you never heard of this place, then just remember that Sweetwater is a small city in Miami-Dade County. You will hope that Manny would change his no notorious ways and instead proceed on a more righteous path. However, this was untrue in the case of Manuel Pardo. Soon in the year 1981, he and three other police officers were charged with brutality. By now, I guess you must have deduced his violent and deceptive nature. However, this case was dismissed soon and Pardo was a free man. Not surprising. Pardo continued his career as a policeman for another four years before it came to an end. He only got better at deception and lies during this time. Manuel Pardo flew all the way to the Bahamas to testify that his Sweetwater colleague was an international undercover agent and not a drug smuggler. <laughs> this lie was all it took for his career to go haywire. Perhaps this might have been the trigger point. There is nothing conclusive to suggest Manuel was suffering from a mental illness or stress that would drive him over the edge. However, he did seem to be audacious because he recorded all the murders in his diary along with the pictures of his victims. In fact, Manuel Pardo never felt that ounce of guilt while shooting his victims. He says that he shot his victims as many times as necessary. Apparently, he felt strange kind a strange kind of comfort and thrill in shooting them and if there were no more bullets he would reload the clip in his guns however it was easy to get caught up in florida's cocaine cowboys era back then manuel wanted the quick bulk of the cash he yearned for the bling the fast cars and women that came along with the host of coke and pot dealers however pardo's version entirely paints a different picture he still believed that he was ridding the earth of scumbags. He believed that he was the vigilante who was on a crusade to clean the town. Yeah, hell yeah, I enjoyed it, was his response to an interviewer. The most shocking part was his vig vigor as he bounced on the most musty prison floor as he recited his tale. Many people treated him as a hero and many games to pit Pardo as a hero who sets on a mission to eliminate all the drug lords and dealers. But However, this side of the story fails in explaining why he would use his victim's credit cards. In addition, he also killed an innocent person whose only crime was to be a drug dealer's girlfriend. It was quite odd that Pardo had a head full of thick and dark hair during his trial because by the time his execution knocked on his door, he did not have any kind of hair on his face. If you ask me, he looked quite scary before death. Against his lawyer's advice, Manny acted in his self-defense and claimed that it was all part of a greater good. He believed that he was doing the right thing. He thinks he has the right and therein lies in his insanity, reported the defense attorney, Ron Gurunick. Manny was quite bold and quotes, they were parasites and they're leeches, Manny testified in front of the court. In addition, his racist comments only enraged the jury that consisted of both Jews and blacks. Pardo only had one regret in his life. He was pretty sad that the number of killings was only nine and not 99. Yeah, crazy man. He also testified that he took their Polaroid snaps and burnt them in an alabaster ashtray, which was his version of burning his victim souls in the eternal fire of hell. On April 20th, 1988, he was found guilty. 
He was charged for the murders and, and executed at the age of 56. He was executed and all the pleadings about his mental state were dismissed in his final hours by the court. So, what punishment does this ruthless person deserve? About 26 years after the killer spree and 24 years of Manny requesting a glorious death, justice was served. On December 12, 2012, Manuel Pardo, age 56, was executed for the crimes he had committed. At Florida State Prison in Starke, Manuel Pardo closed his eyes for the last time. He was executed by lethal ejection and was pronounced dead at 7.47 p.m. However, before falling to, the, to this internal slumber, he paid homage to his military past and then dropped. Airborne forever, he said, and added a sweet ode to his beloved daughter saying, I love you, Mitchy, baby. His death marked the 43rd execution that took place in the United States of America in the year 2012. However, his death also highlights the era of corruption and disgrace. It is a reminder of a scandalous decade where cops robbed, killed, and got arrested for crossing lines and violating their oath. In the final hours of his life before he faced his ultimate death, Manuel Pardo visited about eight of his relatives and friends. He also enjoyed a Cuban-style meal comprising of roasted pork, red beans, rice, plantains, and avocado, and tom tomatoes with olive oil. In addition, he also had pumpkin pie, eggnog, and Cuban coffee as his dessert before justice was delivered. Perhaps it would have been the 16 longest minutes of his life as he slowly slipped into an internal sleep. Before meeting his death, he nearly wrote a letter claiming that he felt no remorse in wiping out his six male victims. In quotes, it was a mild justice, said Frank Judd. Pharaoh's nephew in the aftermath of Pardo's death. So what do you all think? Was the execution fair or did Manuel deserve a more stringent punishment? Were all his crimes justified? Was Manuel Pardo really demented or was it all a mess? Let me know in the comment sections below. Well, that's everything for today, man. I definitely miss you all and I'm glad to be back. Subscribe to the channel to stay tuned to more videos and I will be back to uncover more true crimes that will leave you baffled. Again, this your boy Glover. First name Glover, not the last name Glover. And don't get it twisted. See you next time. Peace.